What I'm talking about, the, the, the kind of the lore and the vocabularies of um, uh, tribe and awful, uh, I say in the Middle East and beyond. Why beyond? Is because so much of what I'm talking about is not strictly speaking the Middle East, but the kind of post Ottoman world, uh, which includes the um, uh, parts of the uh, Balkans and the Caucasus, and, uh, and there are sort of continuities and similarities uh, in, in all these. Um, I start off with my native uh, uh, Iraq, where uh, I grew up as a boy. Um, and uh, one of the uh, dishes that was considered by many to be a national dish, although there is no really national dishes in Iraq, uh, was something called pacha. Uh, and pacha, I should explain the vocabulary, the derivation. The word pacha is, actually means feet. It's uh, from the Persian pi, which is foot. Uh, and pie chair, which is uh, diminutive, so it's a little foot. But so in many places, you know, certainly in the sort of Turco-Iranian world, which in, spills over into part of the Arab world, uh, then there are dishes called uh, pacha, which are made with, with feet, soups made with the foot and, and head, you know, kele pacha. Uh, and which is distinct from the tribe, which is uh, called something else in uh, Turkish and Persian, Ishkembe, and in uh, uh, Arabic, uh, Kirsha or Fawaro. Uh, but in, in Iraq, the word Pacha is used to indicate all this whole genre. And it's uh, uh, including, you know, the, the heads and the feet and the tribe and, and everything else, make it into various kinds of soups and stews. Um, and the only parallel to uh, the, this usage of the word pacha as a generic is in, in, in Greece, where the word patsas is uh, also used as a generic uh, you know, to indicate all these uh, different bits and the, the soup or stew uh, that is made of them. Now, uh, in the household where I grew up, was Jewish, um, we had a particular kind of pacha, which was, um, a, which was usually cooked when uh, a lamb was cooked, was killed uh, on occasions, you know, whether it's uh, festivities or family occasions or whatever. Uh, and then you would use, you would use the, the innards and everything in the lamb. And the way it was cooked was that um, the, uh, the tripe, the stomach compartments, uh, were, um, after washed and cleaned, then uh, stuffed, you know, made into pouches with scissors, needle and thread, and stuffed with um, rice and baharat, which is mixed spice, uh, onions, uh, bits of meat, bits of liver, or whatever, um, and then cooked with the uh, feet and with the tongues uh, in uh, a stock with tomato and more spices. Uh, and then uh, it's, uh, after initial poaching, it's left to cook overnight uh, on very slow fire. Uh, and it became a Saturday lunch, you know, on very special occasions when you'd kill the lamb. Usually the Saturday lunch was stuffed chicken, but on these occasions it would be the, uh, the stuffed tripe. And that was an absolute favorite, you know, all drooled over this. Why and... did we have any today? What? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so then um, I was very surprised later in life, in my English life, to find that people were so disgusted with tripe and thought, I always thought of it as being a... Uh, but then, uh, for outside the home, uh, in the markets, in the stalls, in the salons, and uh, the pacha meant um, the soup, uh, in which sometimes you'd make into a teshrib, you would um, uh, take stale bread 
and soak it in the, in the juice. Well, you could do that with beans, you could do it with anything. And it's the Iraqi parlance called tashrib. This is the, originally in the old Arabic was called therid. Uh, no, hardly any of the Arabs say therid now, but the Turks say tirid. Um, and uh, so in Iraq it was tashrib. In much of the rest of the Arab world, it's called feta. So, you know, one of the great dishes in uh, traditional restaurants in Cairo, for instance, was uh, feta bil kawara, which is the, uh, the soup with, with the stale bread. And in Lebanon, they actually put yogurt on it as well, which I don't think is a good idea. <laughs> uh, so, um, there's also a great lore about this. Uh, well, first of all, let me say that when I thought at first, of course, this uh, uh, stuffed tripe was peculiar to us, you know, we had great cooking and so on. Then, of course, I discovered it was widespread in the Turco-Iranian world and uh, northern Iraq and, uh, and also historically, you know, looking at uh, the book uh, by, uh, edited by Charles Perry on medieval Arab cookery, which uh, some of you may be familiar with, I found several uh, recipes for uh, stuffed tripe of this kind, which is also cooked overnight in a tanur, in a tanur oven. Um, then uh, to come to the uh, tripe uh, stew, the, the, uh, the soup, um, one is widespread in all over the this post-Ottoman world that I'm talking about. And um, uh, one of the legends about it uh, is that it's a cure for hangover. That in fact, you, uh, uh, if you're drinking uh, well into the night, then you should have a, an early breakfast of uh, Pacha or Iskemba, whatever it's called, and uh, it's a cure. So in fact, there's a pattern which I actually see, you know, from Iran all the way to Albania and, and parts of Yugoslavia and so on, including Turkey, and, uh, in which, you know, there is this belief and there are practices in the major cities uh, in which, you know, the marketplace will have uh, tribe stalls, you know, serving and the people would, uh, uh, workers who are coming to work early would have their breakfast there. It's believed to be a, um, a good thing to start the day with. Uh, but at the same time, they'd be joined by revelers who've been drinking all night, uh, who'd also come to partake in, in this, you know, the idea is that it will. And I seem to have read somewhere, which I can't trace where it was, um, that this some, something like that was happening in Le Al in Paris you know, in which you also had revelers coming in and in the early morning uh, to join the market workers uh, and partake in uh, onion soup, but also tripe, tripe soup. And of course, the remnants of Leal, you know, the, what the area that's now Leal has retained uh, uh, the uh, restaurants which uh, specialized in uh, tripe, you know, including one famous one called Pied de Cochon, uh, and then an, another one, I'm not sure that's still there, called Faramond, which had uh, uh, Normandy cooking. And uh, I recall I ate there once many years ago and ordered tripe à la mode de Caen. And uh, it came uh, in a bubbling pot over a live coals, a small brazier which was brought to table. And when the bubbling subsided, then it was served and it was different cuts of tripe and uh, feet, uh, feet and all cooked in uh, Norman style in, uh, you know, with, with uh, cider and uh, cream and calvados and so on. And it was, you know, very good, delicious, certainly much more sophisticated than when I, what I'm used to. Anyway, um, to come to uh, the other elements other than tripe, uh, the intestines. Uh, and of course, there are so many uh, intestine uh, dishes. I think that's already been mentioned uh, in the session, the session this morning. Um, and uh, one of the most common is the uh, bombar or mumbar. I'm not sure which is correct. People seem to pronounce it interchangeably, uh, which is really like a sausage of the intestines stuffed with rice and spices and meat and so on and stewed. 
uh, in different ways. Um, and the other one is uh, the, uh, the platted intestines and chitterlings, um, which are called cocorets uh, or cocorezzi in Greece. And that became, I don't know how long for, how historically established, became a market food in, uh, certainly in Istanbul and in the main cities, you know, sort of fast food. You get a cocorette sandwich uh, and, uh, you know, with pickles and salads and rocca usually. And uh, that, of the, in Greece, uh, it's uh, cocorezzi, which is uh, much more associated with um, uh, Easter, because that's when you slaughter uh, mm -hmm. sheep and goats. Uh, and then you, this, uh, the intestines are used in this uh, cocorezzi, but also in uh, a soup, I think called marganitas, mag uh, which uh, incorporates the uh, various bits of the intestines and other things. Um, and so um, the other element, which has not been mentioned and doesn't seem to be in people's mind as tripe, is the fat that's called coal fat. Are you all familiar with coal fat? Coal fat is, is like a, a, a net which is around the stomach of the, uh, yeah, it's a crepin in French, or crepinette uh, is what is made. And of course, here in, in Britain, you have the, um, oh God, do you know the word? Haggard, no, no, not faggots. haggards, faggots, faggots. Yeah, faggots which are made, which are wrapped in this. And that, of course, is also um, uh, uh, this features in many things. And one of the most common now in the globalized food world uh, is what well, this is the Cypriot uh, kebab, which is called shiftalia, uh, which is uh, force meat, spiced force meat, uh, wrapped in the uh, coal fat and grilled as a kebab. Um, and uh, people have wondered about the origin, you know, the derivation of the word. Of course, in, in Turkish, shiftali is, is, uh, is peach. But it's nothing to do with peach, of course. So, uh -huh, five minutes, okay. Uh, nothing to do with peach. So, in fact, the most common... The shiftalia. The, the shiftalia, the force meat is made like a sausage, is then no, wrapped. It's just the word, the name, if you could spell it. Uh, shiftalia is uh, S H E F T E L I A. Yeah, shiftalia. Yeah. Um, uh, it's in, in the paper anyway. So. I know people can't be bothered to read the papers, but <laughs> uh, so uh, the 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 derivation that uh, I think is correct is that it uh, it comes uh, from you know Arabic Persian shish uh, kufta, uh, or so shish kufta uh, then uh, becomes uh, 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 abbreviated into shifta, uh, and then. Alia is the kind of Greek uh, suffix. Uh, so it became, sh sh the, the, I think that's the derivation of it. And then I discovered that this actually there is uh, an Arabic word for the, uh, this kebab, which is tarb. I discovered it in an old restaurant in Cairo at one time. A journalist friend took me there, right in the old market area. And they had this kebab tarb. And um, it turned out to be shiftalia, which was uh, quite, quite well, well done. Um, now, um, did I want the time I have? Oh yes, speaking of kebabs, uh, the organ meats were quite commonly, uh, you know, so you'd have uh, liver and kidney and sweet breads and uh, uh, testicles uh, all were, were threaded on skewers and kebabs. And sometimes the, um, the skewer of kebabs, especially with liver, would have this um, 
coal fat draped over it before it's uh, cooked. And the other way in which you associate uh, coal fat with liver uh, is when pieces, large pieces of liver are, are seasoned and wrapped in coal fat before being uh, grilled or fried. And I discovered an, that there's an Italian recipe in the same way in which you have uh, liver which is stuffed with uh, ham and uh, mushrooms uh, and then wrapped in coal fat uh, and, and fried. Um, uh, it does add a lot of uh, richness to whatever and it's even one uh, uh, place in Turkey on the Aegean when I had a, a pilaf which is cooked in uh, Gomblek, would you say gomblek? Uh, and uh, you know, yeah, so you'd have an each each pilaf, uh, which is stuffing pilaf, which is rice uh, uh, fried with bits of uh, meat and uh, pine nuts and onions and spices, um, and then this would be put in a, an oven dish, covered in this coal fat uh, and finished in the oven, and that was really quite quite remarkable. I haven't come across it anywhere else, just once in uh, one, one of the Aegean cities. I, I can't remember now where. Fine, well, um, there, you know, I have a lot in the paper also about heads and um, uh, just one last bit about vocabulary, you know, that um, uh, the, uh, these, a generic name for offal uh, in Arabic, which is then copied into Turkish, is sakatat or sokot, and that means fallen things, things that have fallen down or base things. So it's really the equivalent of offal and of the French les abats. Uh, but, uh, and then, it, and I'm just wondering, I don't know if anybody here knows uh, whether the uh, Greek word for um, liver, sikotaki, actually comes from, you know, the, from the sakatat or not. Anyway, I'll finish here. Thank you. Niye? Bağımlısınız. Abi şuradan niye yiyorsunuz? Bana onu bir anlat. Ya bağımlıktır. Pilav mı seviyorsun? Sakatat mı seviyorsun? Et mi seviyorsun? Baba şuradan. Tamam işte. Hayır, mı? Şey mi? Fark, fark etmez. Şuradan, değil. Niye gece? Çalışıyoruz gündüz. Boş zamanımız yok gece. Boşuz. Herkese bir çay ver hele. Abi herkes yapraklı taneli istiyor ama özünde istediklerinden ziyade öyle duydukları için istiyorlar onu. Yoksa tadı olarak çok bildiklerinden değil. Ama güzel olanı taneli olandır. Kimisi çok pişmiş sever böyle içi lapa gibi olacak ama genelde tanelidir, lezzetli olan. Abi taneli olduğunu anlayabilmesi için ustamız çatarla şırdanları yokluyor, yoklamadan geçiriyor. Ondan sonra müşterinin isteğine göre taneli ya da iyi pişmiş ayırt edip servise yönlendiriyor. 
Some of the customers, they, uh, they were saying some of the customers like it um, a little undercooked like al dente and the other uh, they like it overcooked. So it's like uh, lepa as we say in Turkish. So uh, you can't uh, understand what you're eating, it's the rice or everything, so they're cooked, t t too much cooked actually. So that's what they were saying at the end of the uh, conversations. So I'm Tuba and um, well, uh, before starting, my, um, I lost my reading glasses yesterday at uh, Paddington Station, so please bear with me. And the Can other, uh, no, the, the, I tried many, it didn't work. <laughs> 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 Thanks all. <laughs> And um, the other is, while growing up, uh, we had too much, too much drinks, as uh, Sami was saying, at night. And we always go to the, the stripe sh shops in the morning, at 4 or 5 a.m. in the morning. And shirdan was my favorite cut of a stripe soup. So we always had the shirdan. And we always used to say shirdan, but thick cut shirdan. And we used to pour a lot of garlic and vinegar and lots of chili flakes, two of them. And of course, you're awake. And then we can continue. Mm -hmm. Of course, we go to bed and then the school and, you know. So, um, sure done. Um, I'll start. Um, Anatolian lens have a conservative makeup, prior prioritizing family life and protective manners when family is concerned. But in case of food, the conservatism may fly off the window, replaced by wild adventurism. Sa some savory dishes or desserts bear quite offensive or provocative words, as names these words would be regarded off limits to use in daily life. But they somehow pass along fine in case of food. Is there a wholly innocent folk na naivete behind this controversial use of words, or is it the unstoppable surfacing of repressed emotions? Provocative names aside, there are an, an, an abundant number of examples of dishes with aphrodisiacs used as ingredients or even dishes conceptualized as aphrodisiacs themselves. <laughs> For example, there are also dishes and desserts which erotic uh, con connotations and suggestive visual appearance, such as kadımbudu köfte, women's thigh meatballs, Dilber Duda, Bell's Lips, Vezir Parma, Vizier's Fingers, Hanum Göbeği, The Lady's Navel, <laughs> Incir Dolması, Stuffed Fix. And beyond their names, oozing with er erotic evocations, the heavyweight, bombastic and amorous appearance of these dishes are almost erotic adventures in themselves. And on those other hand, aside from the above mentioned ones, there are also other dishes with names that may become topics of sociology. These like the kerhane tatlısı, bordello dessert, or şıllık tatlısı, the tart woman dessert. And there are many well known at the southern parts of Turkey, but very much loved all across country and with some people becoming their addictives. While, as we mentioned, such as examples may be found all, all over Anatolia, but in the southern parts of Turkey, in the Anatolian lands surrounded by the Mediterranean Sea, there are two savory dishes using offal as main ingredients that push the boundaries of provocation even further in visual terms. One of them is the dish of Şırdan, made of the abomosum, the fourth and final stomach compartment in ruminants, and the other is mumbar, prepared from the large intestines of the animal. The article focuses over Şırdan, which is very important and unique place in the cuisine of the southernmost southern city of Adana. Adana is a city located in the southern part of Turkey, where you see the map over there. Uh, it's the small Adana map, and adjacent to the Mediterranean Sea. Although Adana has a very hot climate even during its winters, the natives of the sound are known with their love, of, love of for meat, and every part of the animals are lovingly treasured in their cuisine. Adana folks love meat and they prefer meat over fish dishes as well. The population of city consists of mostly Arab, Arab Kurds and nomadic local population called Yuruk and Turkish people and all, and all of these ethnic groups have culinary cultures and predominantly rely on meat dishes as well as very heavy and fatty food. Prior to looking in the specific qualities of Adana's cuisine and how it's constructed constructed and conceptualized by these div diverse groups of people, we should talk about Adana's social qualities. 
Adana Dazahramis society that lives in close to in a conservative, hermetically sealed world, but the town has a pat patriot patriarchal identity. The patriarchal more make uh, sorry makeup sets its eyes closely on and watches over the woman. And this macho approach restrains the free movement and freedom of action of the woman, at least to an extent. There are specific things that are deemed to be unsuitable for women to do in Adana, especially if the woman in a crowded place within a social environment. Nowadays, in contemporary times, modernity has changed a lot of things. But still, uh, what is appropriate and what is not what is not for the woman was as remain a cause of concern for the society. For example, it was regarded as totally <coughs> normal that women went out for meals with their families. But up until recent years, it raised eyebrows if a woman went out alone to eat and drink or dined out at a restaurant with female friends. It was even more unthinkable if women ate something on the street with just casually feasting with a friend or alone. On the other hand, women of Adana are very influential and authorit authoritative domestically and then includes their position in the kitchen. By and large, for a member of Adana society, food is one of the most important rituals of daily life. The following anecdote explains how important uh, is food for natives of Adana perfectly. <coughs> a family of Adana plans and organizes what they will be eating, what they will be having for dinner the following day's evening while they're having breakfast. Who you must not forget the neighboring town Gaziantep, natives of Gaziantep plans and calculates what they will be eating for the next week's dinner while they're having their breakfast as well. And some subsequent meals are always a source of inspiration, uh, imagination for natives of Adana. In case of Gaziantep town folks, subsequent week's meal. And what to have for following lunches, dinners are always well planned ahead. Regardless of their ethnic background, all of Adana people make us make us part of a cattle and small cattle alike. All sorts of offal awful cherished by Adana's people. Nonetheless, the place Shirdan and Mumbar are special. As a reminder, Shirdan is made of Abu Musum, the fourth and final stomach compartment in ruminants. And Mumbar is prepared from the large intestines of the animal. And both offals are stuffed with rice and cooked like dolma, other stuffed dishes. Shirdan is so much loved in Adana's natives and raw Shirdan Abomasum featured in one of the top imports of Adana from other cities. Now we go to Shirdan. Shirdan, the organ of Abomasum. Shirdan is the last part of the digestive system of the herbivorous ruminant animal stomach that have multiple chambers. <coughs> Abomasum is defined as the fourth stomach of the ruminant animal and is placed just in front of just part of the links the small intestine to the rumen and the rest of the system, also called as Bezdimide in Turkish, proventriculus. The herbs chewed by animals are digested also here, once more for the provent proventriculus with gastric juices. The digested food passes on to intestines. When the ruminants is born, first, this part of the body develops and grows, but shortly in time, the other three parts develop, equating all four parts at the same similar maturity stage. Because of this, shirdan used to be in cooking, used in cooking, is to be taken off from the newborns. So there is this little di diagram of shirdan, the little esophagus and everything. And some small dialects, the tongue and tongues of Turkey, due to its crease and wrinkle texture of its walls and membranes, Shirdan is also called kırkilim, 40 layers, kırkilim, sorry, uh, 40 layers, kırk yaprak, 40 leaves, kırk ambar, 40 barns. In Uzbek language, Shirdan's name is Shirdon. In Gawashi? Uh, in, in Gawash, it is Shartan and Shartan. The etymological dic dictionaries, such as Turkish sources dating from the year 15, 15, 15th century, uh, 1500s, like the book called Jami ul Furs, which happens to be the oldest source of that mentions Shirdan, and the book called Muntehab Shifa, Seçilmi Shifalar, Selected Curses, written in Old Anatolian Turkish, point out that this part of animals thickened the blood. Evliya Çelebi, who happens to be one of the greatest 
travelers of the 17th century and whose name has become epic, not just for the Ottoman Empire, but also all around the world, mentions Shurdan three times in a seminal work called Seyadname, tra the travelogue. Etymology of Shurdan denotes that the word had passed into Turkish from Farsi, uh, from the word Shirdan, Shurdan. In Farsi, Shir means milk and Dan means cup bearer. Nevertheless, Shurdan passes in the word meant to an Iranian poet Mevlana, Mevlana Ebu Isak Halaji Skirazi's poem named Kenzul, Kenzul Ishtiha. Shirdan is both the name of the dish and the organ of Abu Musum and the fourth and final stomach. And as afor aforementioned, the milk consumed by the calf is directly poured into the Shirdan due to the special qualities and digestive systems of ruminants. Consequently, Shirdan bearing the rennet becomes the most natural starter of the cheese. We come across the usage of Shirdan as a starter for cheese up until 50 years ago in Anatolia, and as a very common practice in a day of produ production. In our contemporary times, even if rarely, we come across such as a Shirdan in rural areas. The habitants using Shirdan as a starter are places that have not really cut themselves off their traditions and have a propensity to continue of their old modes of doing things. There are the peasants, folks, or nomadic or semi-nomadic people that resist change and pressures of modernization. Although there are various recipes, what we can say about using shurdan as a starter is as follows. The shurdan the, of a lamp or a newborn goat is taken off the goat, should not be weaned, should be still and only consuming the mother's milk, and the baby animal should not have eaten or consumed anything else. Shirdan, then sh the shirdan is then taken out, should be washed and salted. Then if it's left to dry, and the, then it's left to dry in open air. The drying process sometimes lasts about a month. The shirdan then has dried off, is left to soak in a jar filled with water. In some places, chickpeas, figs or grapes are just put inside the jar so that they are served as catalysts to speed up the fermentation process. The jar is sealed off. It is left to rest for a week, sometimes 10 days. Once the starter is ready, the shirdan is taken out of the jar and in water, uh, and this water mixture is used whenever it's needed. But in some parts of Anatolia, shirdan is never take, taken out of the jar. The shirdan dolması, shirdan dolması, stuffed shirdan. Um, at the times of Ottoman Empire, shirdan dolması, the stuffed shirdan, was a dish of the palace and was made according to the following recipe. Lungs, heart, heart of the small kettle are cooked with rice, spices, mostly salt and cinnamon, and these mixed ingredients are filled, with, filled inside shirdan. What's that? All way of saying shirdan, 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 and were cooked pure in the crystalli crystalline water. The shirdan that are cooked are, are then taken out of the pot and laid in the tray to cool down. Once they are cooled off, the shirdan pieces are sliced thinly, dipped into an egg batter, eggs batter, and, and slices were fried in ghee butter. Oh God! For the majority of the Ottoman people, stuffed shirdan were consumed at feasts or festive dishes. Are we going to have some? We just mm -hmm. In the 19th century, mm -hmm. how many minutes we have? Oops. Which which part you? Which you mm -hmm. Hmm? Shum. Shum. Okay, so we are skipping. Even though shirdan is a very heavy and fatty dish, it is consumed in all seasons at all times of the day. Mild winter nights of Adana are when shirdan is consumed the most, but it may be even found on streets as street food of all, all year, eaten by sidewalk during lunch breaks. The street vendors selling shirdan prepare the dish by boiling it thro throughout the night and have shirdan simmer over cauldrons placed over small gas stoves on the street. When, when lunch time arrives, this arduously cooked curious food is then consumed by the creme de la creme of the city, as well as the urban middle, urban middle class, making the whole process a gastronomical ritual shaped by the whole of the city. There is a real surprising aspect of shudan consumption of the street. 
At the end of the day, stuffed shirdan is not an ordinary dish. Moreover, Adana is not just an ordinary city and has a very, very open sort of relationship between men and women. And as I mentioned, in all parts of town, in center of rural parts alike, in patriar patriarchal, male-dominated orders rule, rule, rules the society. Considering the surrounding environment, it is a real sight to come across the chic women dressed in well-tailored suits, bending over the cauldrons of shirdan vendors, first eyeing all the stuffed shirdan pieces one by one, selecting the pieces they, that they like the most, pointing out on street vendor with their fingers, their price pieces, and eventually biting the shirdan heartily in public. In fact, shirdan is morph morphologically beyond the boundaries of eroticism, del delving right into the realm of pornography. Aside from Shurdan's interesting outlook, one must remember that it is difficult to eat out, out on the street. In every bite, the top, the top part points upward erected, and fatty juices <coughs> of the dish ooze out. With tactful bites, the fatty juices do not drip out to the chic dresses, but they leak down from side of the lips, gliding down to the neck, ever making their ways to the, to the décolleté and to the bosom. <laughs> the upper crust ladies warn each other, other than the dripping juices, churning with laughter. Most important of all, uh, as they're happening, these ladies are either alone or have their female friends surrounding them. Yes, they may, they may have also their male colleagues accompanying them, who have their suits on, dressed sharply by, for business, but they, do, but they do now have their husbands accompanying them for these lunch escapades. Oh, I still have time. Oh, okay. And more. Tips of arm shape. Paper. The paper is all on the, uh, with the other paper, so you can read all about it uh, there. Any questions? <laughs> Bunu eğer seksüel olarak algılarsak onların dışarıda böyle bu şırdanın yemek yemesi yani nerede kalıyor? Yok yok onlar algılamıyorlar zaten. Hmm. Yani niye o zaman pornografik diyoruz bunu? Ben diyorum. Ha. She is calling it. Uh, sen söyle. Okay. They don't think so in Adana or in Turkey. It's just my opinion. I think so. But I'm right. I, I, I think I'm right. <laughs> They they should never know these uh, words. Um, feminist mm -hmm. olarak mı değerlendiriyorlar o zaman bu yaptıklarını veya değerlendirilmeli mi veya bir? Uh, this is just her point of view. I mean, uh, yeah. she doesn't think every anybody is thinking like or you know evaluating their uh, eating in the public or you know uh, a sexist or feminist yeah. or anything else, but. That's how she sees the eating shirdan out on the public or streets. Can, can I say that we, uh, this stuff tribe I was talking about, that was yeah. mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. included shirdan, mm -hmm. shirdana, we call it. Uh, but they spoiled the shape because they would cut it up and make pouches. Mm -hmm. So you didn't see the, uh, mm -hmm. the full uh, stretch of the shape. Goes to the <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's more of a comment because it, what I find interesting, one is that these are all from young animals, you said. So I'm uh, assuming these are foals, because otherwise it would be way too expensive to kill all your young animals. Mm -hmm. But in, uh, what, in Europe, uh, this part, the fourth chamber of ruminants is generally mm -hmm. not used for trucks. 
What do they use for? The fourth chamber. Just for. It was, yeah. it was the fourth chamber, which is the true stomach okay. of the animal. Uh, and the uh, 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 first three chambers. Uh, mm. uh, and I have a question for Samuel along that line. Uh, were the, when you were growing up, was the butchers that were selling meat also selling the offal, or were they, did they have separate people selling offal? No, it was the butcher was the, the yes. And, but as I was saying, you know, that you tended, you, you tended to cook tribes when you actually killed the sheep at home. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, so the, you weren't purchasing uh, Yeah, but you could also do it. You know, certainly the, uh, the feet, you know, the pasha, the kawara, or whatever, you could buy, you know, and I think it was the, the regular butcher. Well, if I may add to that, in Turkey uh, we have two kinds of butchers, one the normal meat butchers, the prime cuts and everything, and the others are the awful butchers, yeah. uh, we call them. So they're only eligible for selling and you know processing and cleaning and selling, only sak uh, sakatat, only awful. Yeah. So uh, you can find awful. Uh, Pelin will be talking all about it in, uh, tomorrow, I think she has a beautiful paper about it in Istanbul Cuisine and awful butchers and everything, but uh, we have a couple of really old butchers, awful butchers, that like third generation, mm. maybe one is fourth generation. We used to have a lot, now we have little, but we still go and uh, shop from our awful butchers and cook at homes. How about the alcohol that we consume? I mean, is it? And then likewise, Sammy, with, with tripe. Uh, the suggestion was, was that this oh, is the, it comes at the end mm. of a session. But um, is that sort of a, a convention? Is it, um, is it ever transgressed as a convention? Can you drink alcohol with it? Oh. Can you trick alcohol? Sorry, yeah. Yes, you can, can trick alcohol. alcohol with, with no, we we, yeah. we, we, we have it we have it at the end. Yeah, no. No. Actually, I think yeah, we uh, at least in um, in Turkey, uh, the tribe uh, salons, you know, mm. the salon, I usually mean, drive. Right. Yeah. So you can't, you know, you, no. you, you, you do your drinking and, and that's why I'm yeah, yeah. yeah. No. But in, in Athens, you know, in um, uh, the central market on Market, I think it's called. Uh, you have the uh, Uzarias hmm. next to the tribe shop, so you can go from one to the other. <laughs> but usually, tribe shops are like for, for hangover cures. Right. So it's finished. <laughs> no, no, no. The point is that it's no, yeah, we, we don't serve alcohol with in the tribe shops in Turkey. Unfortunately, it would be nice with some cold beer, maybe. It's Why not? Too bad, I suppose, when you're drunk. Anyway, yeah, you yeah it's very good when you're drunk. <laughs> One of the things I've noticed is that a lot of the offal <coughs> is used as a container, as traditionally as you have sausages and tripe is sometimes a container, but sometimes chopped up. Yeah. And so do you have both of them in Middle Eastern cooking? Do you use it both ways, or is it primarily? Yeah. No, no, both, both ways. Yeah. Both ways. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, uh, actually, the, the, the stuffed one is less common. Um, and uh, uh, whereas the actual you know, soup or stew of uh, Qatar tribe with feet and, and bits of hands and what have you, that's the most common. And certainly the most common for the, yeah, for, for, after, well. for after drinking, you know. Well, of course, well, we make stews from the tripe as well, but not as common as soup. Well, I think um, my experience eating tripe in the, the Western Hemisphere has been in Mexico, where it's um, traditionally served at breakfast. Hmm. Everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's served all day, but it's considered to be best for breakfast. Yeah. Yeah, one uh, of the, uh, yeah, sorry. I should, uh, we should see, seek medical opinion on this. <laughs> it is true. It relaxes down the stomach. I mean, uh, if I had a very, very hard day or something, I just go to the tribe shop. I had a you know, bowl of soup with lots of garlic, lots of vinegar, chili flakes on top. You have to have them. And then you feel really, really better. It fixes you up. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it fixes you up. Yeah. Is there another one? And I just, uh, the, uh, just one anecdote is in my paper about the. Uh, uh, the drinkers and the 
thrive shops. You know, they had uh, uh, street corner and like that by the market. You know, there's a, a thrive store with an enormous cauldron where uh, thrive is being cooked. Uh, and these two drunks have a have a row and they start hitting one another. <laughs> and then as people ter- separate them, one of them throws his uh, slipper of the other <laughs> and it falls into the cold. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so the man, after the process is over, goes, can I have my slipper back, please? <laughs> and uh, the, so the striped man fishes it out for him and he looks at it and says, no, that's not mine. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs>